Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Miss Lion's channel. Hi, you guys, and welcome to yet another week. Remote. Remote. Get your remote so you can learn through a screen virtually. It's getting old. But it's super duper fun, everybody. Um, I hope you're doing super duper good. And I'm really sorry about being super boring during our meetups the last couple of weeks. I know I kind of went dry with the games. I promised you guys some radical games and I kind of was like, eh, I don't have any games for you. Um, but um, it is certainly amazing to see your guys' faces and see some of you smiling. Some of you I can't, I can't even see because you, you won't show your face through the video. Um, but it's all good. All 206 of you, you are still enrolled. And we have three weeks to go, yo. I said three weeks to go. Um, so let's review. Our C, Q to the J. CQJ time, your keepsake forever. Meanwhile, learning so some profound art concepts on the way and having a lot of capital F, U, N. And some of you probably are getting annoyed by my crazy style of a teaching. You know you like it. You know you like it. I'm just kidding. You may not like it. <laughs> anyway, all right guys, here we go. So we have page 19, cubism, our selfie holding up our device. Just a quick kind of clarification on this one that I didn't really hit home um, in my example. You just want to make sure that your viewpoints are totally different on the same page. So I have the side of my ear and then my profile of my mouth and then my eyes and then here's my eyebrow, boom, right there. And then I have one side of the hair with a different viewpoint on the other side. So you really want to hit home those different viewpoints on the same pahina. All right, page 20, we have our futurism showing movement on a piece of paper or canvas. And so I showed my finger moving, 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 because that's what I do all day long. All right. And we have our found art ready made on page 21, taking things that are not really made for art and making them like a 3D still life. So I have my sticker book, a stapler, and my ankle weights that I love to wear when I work out. The next page, page 22, double twos, we have juxtaposition, one of my favorite all-time styles of art. So here we go, I have a little self-portrait. Um, I decided to go with the first option, which was the juxtaposition, because I didn't go for the extra credit, although the rule of thirds is very, very important. Um, and if I had you longer, we'd dive way down deep into that, but we don't have time, yo. We just don't have time. Um, so I decided to turn my eyes into computer screens because that's how I feel lately with um, my long hours looking at a screen and the screen looking right back at me, I'm just getting used to that. Um, so my laptop on one side and then my desktop that's looking at me currently um, on the other side with my big fat bushy eyebrows. Page 23, we're going for some Pollock abstract expressionism, some crazy dripping splattered paint in the moment, those triple E's extreme emotional exposure. All right, you guys, moving right along to 25, 6, 7, and 8. I think that's right. We'll find out here. But it's the next five, 24. Pardon my French. All right, oh my gosh, all 206 of you. I have all your stuff ready for you. You're gonna come pick it up here and um, then you can have your goodies from everything you've made from January through March 15th, right? When we were like, bye-bye, see ya, don't come back, yo. All right, here we go, page 24. And um, one of my favorite styles of art, we've got pop art in the house and so, um, Pop art was a time period where people were taking commercially created logos, commercials, magazines, and using those to create fine art. So, um, for example, Andy Warhol took that soup can and print made it over and over and over again um, as a piece of artwork, one of the most popular pieces of artwork um, around. 
Um, and then we have another really influential artist during this time, Roy Lichtenstein. Um, and Lichtenstein is super popular for taking those, um, the, what are those dots called? I forget. Oh, those dots that he uses that um, basically are used for printing um, magazine uh, newspapers at the time. And um, my mind's drawing a blank, but um, I'll write it down here in the in the subtitles. Um, but anyways, Roy Lichtenstein and his use of dotting and um, in and so what you're gonna do? Oh my gosh, get to point, lady, get to point. What you're gonna do for this particular activity, you guys, is you're gonna take your favorite logo. So it can be a clothing logo, shoes logo, it can be boom, fill in the blank logo. Um, and we're going to be creating a really interesting piece of artwork by taking close-ups and um, putting them on our paper. So first of all, you're going to select a logo. And for this activity, you're just going to need colors, um, coloring utensils um, to color this baby out. And so my favorite clothing logo, ladies and gentlemen, and it probably is not the same as yours because I am much, much, much older and I have my own style, um, but it has to be uh, Free People. Love that brand. I pretty much could buy everything from that place because I love their clothing and um, all of their jewelry, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take their logo, and here it is right there, the FP, boom. And um, I, before I, I do that, let me back up. What I would like for you to do for this activity is I want you to just break apart your paper into some interesting triangular shapes kind of cut all the way through. So I'm first going to start, and you're going to make a perimeter on your paper that kind of goes from edge to edge. <clears throat> you can have a little bit of space around. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just make some large kind of cuts through the rectangle that you made, like so. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the logo and we're going to use a part of that logo and repeat it at a very, very close up spot. So what I would like for you to do is I'm going to just screenshot the logo. And um, what you can do also is um, you can use the computer, obviously, to find your logo as well. And so I'm screenshotting that again. And I'm going to screenshot it yet again. So we have a nice close up here like that. Okay. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my markers. Of course, I want to use some of the same colors and I'm going to just use part of the logo um, and recreate it really, really, really grande. Boom. Again, we're taking everyday created items and showing emphasis with close-ups and boom and do, 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 do. is that perfect no it's not okay so there's the p in the free people and then I would color out the rest of this pink. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm just going to peruse through the website. And I'm going to snapshots of interesting things that I like that this company produces. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those um, items. So, for example, let's say I want to use one of their earrings or something like so do, 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 do. oh of course it's not working right now okay so what you're going to do is you're going to take some screenshots of different items that that this particular company uses and you're going to do very very close-ups of those items to make a compilation of art here yeah error oh fine Wrong timing, people. Bad timing. So, for example, I was just looking at a pair of earrings earlier. Kind of remember what they look like. And they're kind of like that, like a big eight. Boopy doo, -a la da da. Those of you know, I'm a very earringy person. All right. Okay. All right. 
So I'm taking a logo and using images super close up to create almost like a uh, stained glass collage of those things. Okay, pop art, amazing. All right, moving right along, moving right along. Page 25. Oh, I love this one. Okay, remember, we're making art with things that are found straight out of your home. Art for all. Okay, land art. Okay. So in the 60s and the 70s, ladies and gentlemen, land art was introduced. And land art was like a growing awareness of environmental issues happening, deforestation, pollution, extinction. Artists were creating these large, grandiose pieces of art were created out of things straight out of nature, in nature. And, um, and so, and, you know, artists are still doing that today. And um, it's quite radical, actually. Um, so what I'd like you to do for this particular project is you're actually going to create a piece of land art and that's going to exist somewhere outside. So it's going to exist somewhere in your front yard, somewhere in your backyard, on a patio if you have one. Now if you don't have any external space, <laughs> well, I'm losing my marker. Um, I would like for you to use maybe like um, a pot that you have a plant in or something earthy in your home, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to use your imagination and think about what land art or earth art might be. Um, and I want you to create a piece of artwork and I want you to leave it there for people to see, okay? And I don't wanna give you too many instructions for this one because I want you to use your creativity. I mean, you could use rocks, dirt, um, flowers, leaves, anything, twigs, straight, that is completely organic. And um, so what you're going to do is you're going to create that artwork somewhere, and then I want you to give me a brief description on the bottom, and I want you to sketch it on your paper, okay? So you're going to actually go do it, you're going to describe it, and then you're going to draw it, okay? Land art. One of my favorite things to do is go to the beach and draw in the sand. Draw in the sand. Okay, page 26. Oh my gosh, we're almost to the end. We're almost to the end of the month. I cannot believe it. It's going so fast. Oh my gosh, one of my favorites. Okay, so this style of artwork, you guys, is again a lot of these styles that we're going through on these time periods and these eras of art um i mean i've really given you just a drop in the bucket i mean they're like these large like gigantic styles and i'm really giving you just the basics okay and so i'm going to give you the basics of this one and we're going to talk about street art street art or graffiti Art kind of qualifies, classifies in that same. Murals also can go kind of in this kind of um, genre of art. Um, and wild style, uh, which we're going to really focus on. But I first, before we go into that, I want to just kind of touch on some names here that are really, really important, that really created such a fast, this like fascinating humans um, who have really kind of enveloped street art, graffiti art, um, and that would be Keith Haring, oh yeah, amazing dynamite artist um, who was one of the founders of graffiti art, giving statements about um, culture and life on, um, on, in the city. And um, Banksy, who is currently still creating his stencil artwork all over cities. Um, Shepard Ferry, I believe his name is pronounced. Um, who created the Obama image and the Obey Company is another amazing graphic designer, street artist. Um, and there's so many more ladies and gentlemen that I haven't even gone, like I haven't even like, yeah, but oh my gosh. Um, I think this is a style of artwork that is a really, um, really 
captures uh, young people's attention. And um, because of its kind of um, loose yet um, colorful and um, there's just something very interesting about this kind of artwork. Um, I think that all young people are kind of drawn towards, in my opinion. Um, so what we're going to do for this particular piece of artwork um, in our CQJ is really wrapped around the wild style of graffiti or street art. And that has to do with complicated lettering. And yes, um, this kind of originated with tagging, which is really, um, you know, very controversial, illegal, etc. Um, and, you know, people would create these special tags where they would kind of um, hit the cities with their with their kind of stamp um, so that others would see that they had been there or etc. Um, and again, don't quote me on this because I don't know everything. But um, out of these tagging came this amazing wild style of lettering where it's so um, stylistic and curvy and have these crazy angles that it's really complicated and actually really hard to read at times. Um, and so what we're gonna do for this particular project is I'm gonna lead you through some basics of block lettering and then how to apply a shadow to it, which is often used if, with these um, amazing complicated letters. Um, which also kind of dives right into one point perspective. So um, first and foremost, when you are drawing block lettering, um, the first thing you're going to need for this project, obviously, is going to be pencils and or one pencil, not not plural, um, and some coloring utensils. And so for those of you who have never you know used block print in motion, um, you're going to be starting what I call with the bone structure. Okay, the bones in your letters. So for example, let's say just we're gonna do some small practicing right here. So let's say we're gonna say um, art, <laughs> right? Because that's like what we're doing right now. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my letters nice and kind of spaced out and large. And again, this is just for practice. So I'm gonna go A to the R to the T E. Those are the bones, okay? And to create block lettering, what you're going to do is you're going to be wrapping your skin around the bone structure of your lettering to create block lettering, okay? And so that's what I'm gonna do next, next, next depo, where we're gonna draw the skin on the bones, yeah. I'm gonna go with a magenta or purple. Magenta or purple. Which one do I like better? Oh, that one's not working. Okay, that'll do. All right, so I'm gonna wrap around my letters. Okay, there's my A and my R and my T. Okay, and then I have to go back and put in the windows. And the windows would be those little spaces in the A and the R. Oh, it's raining, I love it. Okay, hopefully it won't get wet because there is a hole in this room over there. Okay, anyway, so though that's the basics of block lettering in like two seconds, okay? So how do we turn it into wild style? How do you turn your lettering into a wild style print that kind of overlaps and has this amazing congruity and just like the illusion of, um, of this beautiful piece of artwork kind of threaded together? Well, what you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is practice creating letters that have similarity in style. So, for example, let's say I want you guys for this particular project to practice using block print and a semi-wild style. If you can kind of wrap your finger, you know, if you can do that, um, that'd be awesome. All right. Now, you can copy me. Of course, you can do that. But for those of you who are feeling pretty confident, I really would love for you to just kind of try to do your O, W, N, okay? Because that is really, really one of my main heartbeats of teaching you art is that you have your own creativity, okay? Okay, so for example, let's say we're going to write art in a um, wild style, and you could write your own name. You could choose really any word you wanted to, um, your last name or an animal or whatever you want just to practice this wild style. And then we're going to apply um, a shadow to it. Okay, so here we go. 
If you need to start with your bones, you may, okay? But I'm just gonna go for it and I'm just going to create um, my lettering here. And again, I'm going for that wild style. This marker is not working. You are not working. I'm gonna get a new one so I can make it better, better, better. Okay, here we go. Don't love it yet. Okay. Wonky. And I am making my A. Okay. Um, again, I'm going for that funky, funkiness. Funky down. Now, a lot of times they're really difficult to read. I guess I'm not that sophisticated. Okay, A. Do the R. Do the A. I'm going to have this one kind of go behind. Now it kind of looks like a J, but it's not. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so once you have your block lettering styled out, your own professional loveliness. Again, you can always search it um, for examples as well. What you're gonna do, now we're onto the shadow. So when you wanna create a shadow off your lettering, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to decide your vanishing point. It's a dot, and the dot is going to be where you are going to have the offset happening. So for example, um, if I would, if I'm going to make um, my shadow coming downward off the letter, I'm going to make my vanishing point like kind of, let's say, right here. Now, once you get super duper good at this, do you need to do a dot? No, because your brain will get really good at understanding where the shadows can go. So I could do it right here, or even possibly maybe I'll do it right over here, just so you can show it. Ding, boom. Vanishing point, okay? So I'm going to put my shadow in a different color. A different color. Different color. All these are my fine tips. No. All right. Are you bored yet? I hope not. I hope not. I hope you're super duper enjoying yourself. Okay, so you got your vanishing point. You've got your amazing complicated lettering, block lettering of your choice. And then what you're going to do, you have your VP, not your vice president. You have your vanishing point. Now, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking those corners that are closest to your vanishing point, and you're going to be drawing these series of small lines, okay? So it's going to look like this. So the closest corner is this one right here. So I'm going to just draw a little line, boom. Okay, the next closest corner is probably this one right here. So I'm gonna go boom. The next closest corner is right over there. And again, I'm just kind of visualizing it toward that vanishing point, like that, boom, okay? And then maybe this one next, boom, all right? And again, I'm moving further back here, back in space, boom, right there, okay? I see this one right here. And then uh, next, 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 oh, um, that one's an interior. Okay, this one is right here. I can probably go boom like that. And then this one right here is gonna go boom right there. And do 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 boom 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 and then over here, blah-dee-da, blah-dee-da, blah-dee-da. Ooh, that was a little big. That's okay. Okay, I believe that's most of them. I might go back and find more as I go. But the next step is once you have your little lines, you're going to be connecting those with, in mind, making the, the lines parallel right above it. So, for example, this right here, from here to here, I'm going to mimic this line right here. Okay, so it's gonna look like this. Boom, shalaka. Now, is it exact? No! Is it perfect? No! But does it look 3D? Kind of, kind of does, okay? So from here to here, this one's gonna go boom to the up. All right, all right, and then the next. This one here, we're going to make this one parallel to the A, and we're gonna just kind of go off, all right? Now this one here, I can't see 
but I definitely know that back here kind of goes like that. Okay, the next one over here is going to be this line right here. Boom, ba -da -da, doo -doo -boo -boo. And then this one right here, and this one right here. Okay, and this one coming up right here is like so, boom, and boom. And this line here comes down <clears throat> like that. And then this one goes across because the T is up there. And then this part like so, a little tricky. But if you practice, you'll get the hang of creating that shadow off of your crazy funky lettering. All right, so there we go. So now I have the basics of my graffiti art with a shadow. So the fun part is to go back, back to 19, oh gosh, don't, don't do it lady. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start outlining. And the cool thing is, is again, once you practice, you're gonna get super good at this and then it'll just become natural to create um, these crazy beautiful letters with a shadow um, that are so rad. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I just wanted to outline this because, I don't know, it'll look cool. It'll look even better, better, better. All right, mm, 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 okay. Okay, so then what you can do is you can go and create, you know, you can color in that shadow effect, absolutely. And then you can go around it. <clears throat> just around your entire shape and adding some stripes of big color to bring your beautiful urban piece of art together. You don't even probably even need that actually at all. And I'd color it out. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe una mas. One more kind of to really bring the... And of course, these are usually done with spray paint. All right, and then I could do some little bloop these, bloop de bloops, boom ba doom. All right, graffiti art with a big fat shadow using a vanishing point. One of my favorite things to do is lettering Scooby Doo. Okay, next page, page twenty. Seven. Okay. Oh my gosh. That one's a fun one. I love that one. All right. Page 27. We're talking about, we're going to talk a little bit more now about perspective. Okay. We just, I just mentioned vanishing point, which has to do with perspective. And so I just want to hit home on perspective, one point perspective and, um, and I'm not really kind of focusing on any kind of era or time period. But I really do want you guys to kind of understand one point perspective. Super, we're going to make it simple. Um, and I wish I had time to teach you two and three and four point perspective. Um, but you'll have to take my class. <laughs> anyway, next year, if we're still doing this remote sauce, I will be so down into teaching that. All right, so one point perspective. So what I'm going to ask you to do for this particular project is you're going to be drawing yourself from the back, okay? So, um, and we're going to be uh, see making a piece of artwork that is visualize us looking from looking at yourself as you're looking forward into a landscape, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you can either take a picture like a selfie of you be of, of you like of the back of you, um, or you can just freehand it and just go for it. So. The main thing for this piece of artwork though is that these items, okay? So we're gonna start by drawing ourselves from behind, okay? So here's here's me. Not a ghost. That's my hair. The hair lady, okay? All right, and okay, again, this is a very loose, loose sketch. And there we go. Um, OK. 
okay. I love my, I love my um, Levi's. It's normally what I wear, as you guys know. All right, there's my Levi's, and my arms are kind of, I guess they're stuck. Okay, so you have the back side of you. What's important with one point perspective, ladies and gentlemen, and when you're when you, when you're visualizing things from your personal perspective, um, the horizon line is going to happen where your eyes fall on the paper, okay? So it's going to look like this. The horizon line, my eyes are probably right about there. So this is where I'd like you to draw your horizon line. This is that line that your brain sees when you look out, if you're at the beach or anywhere for that matter, where you can see the earth hit the sky, okay, is that horizon line. Um, H L. Okay. And, um, the next thing you're going to do is the horizon line. Um, we're going to make our vanishing point, the things at which things vanish right kind of in that middle spot. Okay. So we're going to go like this and we're going to make this our vanishing point, the V to the P. Okay. So everything else is anything that's going into that distance is going to follow to that vanishing point. So for example, let's say we're walking um, on a pier, okay? So you can just follow my lead here. Um, when you're drawing that pier, you're going to make sure that the line is coming, to it's going toward that vanishing point, okay? Like that, all right? Okay, and then we're going to draw the fence, there's like a little gate, uh, what do they call that? What do they call that? Railing. All right, lady, you got this. The railing, the railing. Again, this is super simple. Um, very important for you guys though to really understand. And then I'm going to actually make it come up just a little higher. And should you use a, a flat edge? You could. Okay. If you do use a flat edge though, you want to make all of your lines perfectly felt flat edged. Okay. Like a ruler. But if you freehand it, then everything will be freehanded. It's all or nothing, baby. Okay. So, um, that's really important. Okay. So the next thing is once you have your railing of your pier, the next thing you're going to do is I'm going to make this a little, my, the top of the rail, the top of the rail. Um, we're going to draw some uh, vertical lines. These are going to be like the connectors to the handrail here. And the, it's really important that these are vertical, vertical. Okay. If they're not perfectly vertical, it'll look weird, weird, weird. And then the other thing you want to make sure of is that you're getting closer together as you get further back in space. Okay, and it's harder to see, so it's going to be a little bit more muted. Okay, all right, and make this one right on top. Boom, ba -doom, boom, boom, ba -doom, boom, 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 boom. Okay, vanishing point, horizon line, and again, you're going to make yours look even better than mine. Okay, and then we're going to make some wood planks here on our pier. And so I'm going to draw a series of horizontal lines. And the horizontal lines are going to get smaller as we get further back in space or closer to our vanishing point. It'll give the illusion that it's getting further back in space. Okay. And we could add some little nuts and bolts and nuts and bolts and nuts and bolts and nuts. Lots of bully da boo doo. Boom, ba -dum, boom, 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 boom. Okay. All righty. Then the next step for this fun, simple project on One Point Perspective, ladies and gentlemen, is you're going to be drawing in the water or whatever is out there. Um, so if you are going to make it land, if your trees, are um, in the distance, you know, what you want to make sure of is whatever is closer to you is going to be larger and whatever is further away is going to be smaller. 
and whatever is further away is going to be higher on the paper, and whatever is closer is going to be lower on the paper, if that makes sense, okay? So for example, let's say we have um, some water here. So if I have like, woo, big waves, woo, okay, whoa, okay, kind of big there, lady. Okay, crashing waves, okay, and then we have kind of the waves here, and then it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and less pronounced as we get further back, okay? All right, and maybe I want to make some cows in the sky, and maybe it is the sunset, okay? All right, one point perspective. Drawing yourself from behind, looking forward in space, okay? Page 27, boom, shalaka. Super simple, radical, very important to understand in the world of drawing. Okay, the last page. Oh, no, 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 no. What am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? 2412. Three, four, and five. Twenty-eight. Okay, page twenty-eight. The last one for the week. The last one for the week. All right. Okay, so this particular piece of artwork um, and activity, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about women in art. Okay, women in art. So. Uh, as, I mean, maybe you've already noticed this, but most of the art from the past, ladies and gentlemen, is all about the man, okay? Women were greatly forgot about in terms of their artistic ability through it, throughout history. Um, so in the 70s, um, there was a feminism era where women were starting to speak out like, hey, I'm actually pretty good at art too, yo. Um, and it really... Um, kind of helped women's artwork become more um, prominent. And so what I'd like for you to do for this particular piece of artwork is um, I want you to choose a female artist, okay? And um, three of my favorite, all-time favorite artists, or my two actually favorite artists are Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, she, she was an amazing uh, American artist. And, um, and my current favorite female artist who lives in the city, Ursula Young. And um, she's just phenomenal. And so whoever your favorite female artist is, what I'd like for you to do is you're going to first write their name. We're going to do a little research. A little research time, research time. The name of that female artist and I want you to tell me where she is or f was from, her life when she was born and when she died, or if she's still alive, fantastico. I want you to write three specific things about her style and artwork, three specifics. And then I would like you to sketch one of your favorite pieces of their artwork and then just label it for me. Okay, um, using color, if it was in color, okay? So, women in art, super duper important. Oh my gosh, um, that we really sit and talk about this one because women were like not even like considered artists. And hey, we were good, you know, I promise you, way back when, we just, it's probably just not recorded. So, anyway, going back, back, going back, back, Women in art, page 28. One point in perspective, page 27. Graffiti street art, page 26. Land art, page 25. Last but not least, we have popsico art. I mean, pop art. Oh my gosh, we did it. I hope you guys are doing really, really good. And enjoy these five activities in the CQJ. We just have two more to go. Um, and we're going to call it a school year. Um, and so stay tuned, you guys, and stay strong through CQJ so that you have an amazing, amazing keepsake. All right. Until next time, you guys. Bye.